Hey, this is Seb, and we have some new updates about Bohemia Interactive's new Infusion engine. Just recently, two different interviews were published. On the 9th of February, there was an interview with Marek Spaniel, who is the CEO of Bohemia Interactive and was conducted by Forbes. And the second one was on the 10th, where there was an interview with Pavel Safar, who is the project lead on the Infusion engine. This was done by 80 level, an online news and content platform, for developers mainly. We are going to go into these interviews because there is a lot of new interesting screenshots and information about PI's new engine, as well as the future of Arma. Both articles will be linked in the description. Before we begin, remember to like and subscribe to the channel for more up-to-date information on Arma and Bohemia Interactive. And now with no further ado, let's just jump into the first interview. The first interview we are looking at is the interview with Pavel Safar, the project lead for Infusion Engine. And there are a few key takeaways from the interview I want to highlight first. One, it goes into the history of the development of Infusion Engine. Two, it goes into more detail on the multi-platform aspect. Three, it explains how it will be easier for creators with a new editor. And lastly, there will be a demo this year. Now let's take a closer look at the interview. Pavel says that Marek Spaniel, the CEO of BI, decided back in 2014 to start development of the new engine. He also mentions that it took a few years before development actually started in earnest, and that in 2018 they split the source code from day C. The Enforce and RV engines was mashed together, so Infusion is kind of the baby of these two. And I will cut in here already, because when people hear this, they will probably get a little bit nervous about what that can entail. But Pavel states that many things has been rewritten and or upgraded. They also did a lot of testing and this is very interesting. The first Infusion Engine project was a port of Tanoa from Armored Tree. You know, the, the massive jungle island map from the Apex DLC. Into Infusion and ran it on a PlayStation 4. He says they chose Tanoa because it was big and had a lot of entities, so it was a good test for the engine. But it never states how the results actually came out, but let's just carry on. Then there was one more project. They did a small internal project on top of Infusion, including one prototype that was released to Steam with the codename Project Lucy. And fun fact, Pavel was the one integrating the Oculus Rift headset and controllers with Infusion. Project Lucy is a VR puzzle game with mouse and keyboard support. In my mind, this opens the door for Bohemia Interactive to maybe experiment more with VR in their new upcoming Infusion games. Bohemia Interactive mentioned on the Infusion Engine reveal and on their webpage that they want to develop multiple game titles on top of Infusion. It is emphasized again in this interview that they want one engine for their games going forward. Pavel also confirms that Infusion will support Windows on PC, Xbox and PlayStation, plus Linux but only for their dedicated servers. Next up is modding. The Infusion Workbench has already been mentioned as a powerful tool and Pavel says that one of the key features they wanted to improve upon with Infusion was modding, including support in the tools. The workbench can be seen as an IDE. IDE means Integrated Development Environment and it's software for building applications that combines common developer tools into a single graphical user interface or GUI. Meaning in the workbench you will find everything you need to develop a game or game content on top of Infusion. The new model is no more text editors, everything must be possible in the workbench. Pavel goes on to explain that he thinks one of the most important aspects that will impact creators is that they have implemented a replication layer, which doesn't care about client or server but works with ownership instead. This way, BI developers as well as modders are able to write codes and scripts that will work in multiplayer as well as single player scenarios. What I think Pavel is really trying to drive home is that everything can be done in the editor which is probably the biggest value added for content creators. They can easily mod a config. When they change a property, it will be displayed what has been changed. Changes can be reverted. Many features have been implemented directly into the editor to support that. You shouldn't need to leave the editor. Even the process of packing and publishing a mod 
is handled by the workbench and you just send it to the workshop where players can download. It is a little bit further into the interview that he says that the plan is to release a game demo that will demonstrate the engine's capabilities. And it will be this year. Now this brings me straight over to interview 2 where Forbes interview Marek Spaniel, the CEO of BI, on the 9th of February. In the interview, Forbes asks Marek what games they are preparing now and what does the development of Arma 4 look like at the moment. Spaniel answers that they haven't announced any game yet, but they are working on a new infusion game technology and their goal for this year is to get it into the hands of the players, which is a top priority, again confirming there will be something coming out this year. Forbes then asks if they are not releasing any games this year, and Spaniel replies that he's not saying that, but the priority is a restart of their key series Arma and the Infusion engine will be used for that. Forbes follows up with when they will release this to the world and Marek says they do not have a date, but they want to get something into people's hands this year. Now Marek Spaniel's choice of words is very interesting in this interview. He called it a restart of Arma. In my head, with all the information we have so far about the Arma Reforger trademark, the Reforger name now sounds like Arma is being reforged in a new engine and Pavel said in the first interview we covered that you can't develop a new game engine forever, you need a game project to work towards. In my honest opinion I think that what we're seeing this year is the foundation for the next Arma title. Not Arma 4, but the first iteration of Arma reforged in the new engine. Now if you enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like and comment what you think is coming. Subscribe if you want to follow along and until next time, stay safe.